In our discussion on synthesizing pyrimidines, we saw that there are two pathways by which we can build pyrimidine bases. We can either use the quick and easy method, the salvage pathway, or we can build them from scratch, and that's known as de novo synthesis of pyrimidines. Now, in, a same, uh, in the same analogous way, we can also build purines via these two pathways. We have the salvage pathway and we have de novo synthesis of purines. Now we're going to focus on building these purines from scratch in this lecture. And in contrast to how we build pyrimidines, the way that we build purines is in the following way. We essentially initially begin with that sugar molecule and then we add atoms onto that sugar molecule to ultimately build that purine. And this is in contrast to how we build pyrimidines in which we initially build that nitrogenous base and then we attach it onto that sugar component, the PRPP. So we begin with PRPP, so 5-phosphoribosyl-1-pyrophosphate, this sugar molecule shown on the board. And the first step is catalyzed by an enzyme known as glutamine phosphoribosyl aminotransferase. Now, this enzyme actually contains two active sites and two domains. So one of the domains contains an active site for the PRPP. The other domain contains an active site for glutamine. Now, why do we need glutamine? Well, glutamine is needed to actually replace this pyrophosphate with an ammonia. So we obtain ammonia by hydrolyzing glutamine. So let's suppose we have this enzyme, the PRPP enters the domain of this enzyme, and then the glutamine enters the other domain of this enzyme. Now, once these two molecules are within the enzyme, the glutamine is hydrolyzed, we remove glutamate, and we take that ammonia that we obtained by hydrolyzing glutamine, we channel it via the special channel in the enzyme to the other active site, the other domain that contains PRPP. And then we can basically nucleophilically attack this carbon, removing this entire pyrophosphate. And we form the 5-phosphoribosyl-1 amine, in which we basically replace this entire blue group with this green group, the amine. Now, the next step is actually a series of 10 steps. And obviously, I don't have all the 10 steps on the board because I don't think they're very high yield. What you have to know, however, about these 10 steps is they require a bunch of ATP molecules, they require glycine, aspartate, as well as folic acid, so tetrahydrofolate. So to go from 5-phosphoribosyl-1-amine to IMP, we need glycine, aspartate, tetrahydrofolate, and we also need ATP molecules. Now, once we form the IMP, the IMP can basically follow one of two pathways. We can either follow this pathway and form AMP, or we can follow this lower pathway and form GMP. And the pathway that is followed is basically determined by the concentrations of these molecules within our cell. So, for example, if we have plenty of AMP and we need to build GMP, well then these two enzymes will catalyze this pathway to form the GMP. On the other hand, if we have none of these molecules but lots of the GMPs, then this enzyme will catalyze this upper pathway to form the AMP. So let's begin by focusing on the upper pathway. Let's suppose we have plenty of GMP in our cell and no AMP. So we're going to follow this upper pathway. The upper pathway is catalyzed by a single enzyme, adenylosuccinate synthetase. So we begin with our IMP, as shown here, and we take this INP as well as this aspartate and a GTP. Now, the GTP is hydrolyzed for energy purposes, so we need to hydrolyze GTP to gain the energy to actually allow this reaction to take place. And so, we hydrolyze GTP to form GDP and PI, our orthophosphate, and we essentially replace this oxygen on carbon-6 with this aspartate, as shown here, to form the intermediate adenylosuccinate. 
And now we want to kick off a fumarate group, leave the ammonia group on this carbon to basically form this adenylate molecule, the A and P. Now, this fumarate is the same fumarate that we use in the TCA cycle to basically build the ATP molecules needed for the cell to basically have enough energy to carry out many of its, uh, its processes. Now, let's move down to this lower pathway. So, let's focus on this first process. Notice that unlike in this process that is catalyzed by a single enzyme here, we have two enzymes. We have IMP dehydrogenase, which catalyzes an oxidation reduction step, and then we have the GMP synthetase in which we basically use this ammonia to attach it onto this XMP molecule. So ultimately in this step, we begin with the IMP, we take NAD+, which will act as an electron acceptor, and we also use water. So why water? Well, because we want to attach an oxygen onto this carbon here. So ultimately, IMP dehydrogenase takes electrons away, places them onto NAD to form the NADH, and then we attach an oxygen onto this carbon to form this XMP molecule. Now, in the next step, what we ultimately want to do is we want to remove this oxygen and replace it with this ammonia group. Now, we also use ATP. So, notice that in going from IMP to GMP, we utilize an ATP. But in going from this IMP to the AMP, we utilize this GTP. Now, in this process, what we do is we remove an AMP from the ATP, we attach it onto this molecule, um, onto this oxygen atom, and that increases its energy. It increases its, it, its energy enough so that now this ammonia can basically nucleophilically attack this carbon, removing this AMP group to form the AMP, the pyrophosphate, and we attach this ammonia onto the carbon to basically form this GMP molecule. And now we have the AMP and the GMP that can be used to basically build the RNA and DNA molecules used by our cells. So this is how we build purine bases from scratch. So we ultimately begin with the sugar molecule, the PRPP, and then we slowly attach uh, atom by atom onto that sugar molecule to ultimately to ultimately build our base, our purine base. So the first step is catalyzed by glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase. Then we have a series of 10 steps that basically utilize glycine aspartate, ATP molecules, and folic acid tetrahydrofolate to form the IMP. And then the IMP can basically be used to generate either the GMP or the AMP.